Hey, how's it going everyone? Hope all is well. On today's video, we're gonna be uh, adding more memory to my VM warehouse uh, that I have here. We're gonna be maxing the memory out. Um, so I'm gonna show you the process of um, obviously installing the memory, but also um, we can only shut down one host at a time so we don't bring our um, all our virtual machines down. So we, we're gonna use a process called vMotion which we're able to take a virtual machine and uh, move it over to the other host that's gonna stay up and running while we take the other one down into maintenance mode and add the, the memory. So I will show you that step and then I'll also walk you through the step of uh, uh, taking out the memory that's in there and adding in the new memory to upgrade uh, the host. So stick around. So it's pretty easy. Um, so if I want to move a virtual machine over to another host, it's as simple as I'm going to click migrate. I'm just going to change the um, computing resources because the storage is a separate unit. So I'm going to just click that. I'm going to tell it where to move it to. And I'm going to um, schedule um, vMotion. vMotion is uh, the term that um, VMware uses to, to move that. Um, I'm going to click next and I'm going to click finish and that's going to literally as you can see down below um, it's moving it over with zero interruption to the end user. So here are our two hosts uh, right here one and two so like I stated previously we will shut one down at a time, open it up, uh, change the memory out, put it back in, and then we can do the same on the second host. So this allows for redundancy and be able to move uh, virtual machines back and forth to keep them running all the time. So we will show you that process next. Alright. Alright. Perfect. Yep. which explains why they have the memory the way they do. So now if we had two CPUs, obviously we would be able to use, yeah, what, these well, two banks, or? Yeah. So the, uh, which, wait, so was that on the top? Top. So that was the first one. Okay. So that should be that one. Seven, 16, then eight, 16, then nine, 16. And so the key too, right? I yep. mean, paying attention to the the, the keys. Okay. Right? You want to make sure that the key is correct because yep. otherwise, if you put it in wrong, right, you, you can snap it. So you can kind of see. Um, so he's go. right, and then. Yep. One of the things people don't do correctly too is seating them, right? Okay, yep. So whenever you seat them, you yep. hear them click, click. Okay. Now, uh, one thing to quickly explain, what do you have around your wrist for people that don't know what that is? Anti-static strap. Okay. So I just want to make sure I grab myself. I so, mean, you can so that was the mistake that I shouldn't have been touching, obviously, because I do not have one on. But that's all right. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna let you handle the rest. Yeah. And these to replace them, you either wear this or some anti-static gloves. Okay. And so we're going to go in here with him. And again, you can see I put it in backwards, right? The yep. key was wrong. We're gonna go here, line it up. And I mean, if you don't line that up correctly, you could end up, offsetting this because it's offset yep you can break the little plastic insert in here 
or worst case scenario, a simple memory upgrade turns into you re having to replace your motherboard. Okay. So you don't want to do that, Good right? No. So we go in here, and whatever you just push them down on the corners, you'll hear them pop into place. Perfect. One, two. We're gonna save these just in case. Now, can you just put any type of memory in here, or does it have to be specific? It has to be pretty specific, and um, you want to make sure that whenever you're doing it, right, um, there's the 2933s is what we're replacing now. Yep. And we're putting it in the channels that we're following by looking at the, the dim population slots, right? Okay. And if you don't, um, I, I don't remember all of the different um, configurations, right? Like the yep. 2933, there's the 3200. So I guess the big question is you can't mix and match. You can't mix and match everything, yes. right? I exactly. mean, it, it also is processor dependent. Okay. So the key to buying your memory is make sure you look at what you had before if you're upgrading. Correct, yes. And you're buying the proper memory. All right, so we finished one uh, host here. We're gonna fire this up, make sure everything comes up how it should, and then we're gonna work on the second one. And we'll come back uh, when we're all done that one. Yeah, so it does say 2933. Yeah, it says that's 2933. Yep. Interesting. So are you saying then it, you think it clocks it down or? I, well, we saw in the last one that we just upgraded, we saw that um, once we put in these, they say the 2933. Yep. We installed this into the slots when we powered it up. It was saying it was at 3200. But I believe, and I'm not 100% certain, that it will actually clock it down to what the slower speed okay. will be. Okay, all right, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that so, makes sense. Same. And then we're gonna fully populate. So another thing that we didn't point out here earlier is we mentioned one CPU, the other CPU is not installed. When you look at it, you've got 24 memory slots on this. For this CPU, we're using memory slots from here over, right? We've yep. got 12, okay. 12 slots that we can use for memory. Um, if we had two CPUs in, we could go up to 1.5 terabytes okay. with the RDMs. Um, since we're gonna fully populate this, instead of going to 1.5 terabytes, we're gonna go up to 768. All right, so now does that, does that, uh, with it split, does that just give this memory to that processor? Yes. Okay. HP did a really good job once you pop the panel. You can see CPU 1, C CPU 1, CPU 2, and then you can see the little division line here, yep. and then you can see the channels and the buses. And so it's important too, if you're not fully populating these, that you don't, you, you want to split the dims across the channels okay. so you don't overrun. Okay. Again, some people think that you can just plop them in. And obviously, that's what the color, different color coding is for. Yep, exactly. Yeah, if, if you weren't going to fully populate this, you can see the channels, right? You yep. got black and white for, for one channel, black sure. and white for another channel, black and white. So if you were only going to, for instance, do this, on this particular channel, yep. you would only put it in the whites. Okay. Right? Yep. In this case, we're going to fully populate all 12 of them. Okay. But, right, we're open. Yep. 
we talked about this earlier, the, the key, so we don't want to make sure we don't break the little key on the bottom. Yep. And then we just pop them in. Click, click, and it's in. Very good. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, it ended up being a little bit longer than what I wanted it to be, but I wanted to kind of cover all bases and I'm not sure how many people out there have ever changed memory in a server or even know how to do it even in a regular computer. So I wanted to cover that, the different types of memory, um, what you can and can't do, things like that. And then also um, covering the VMware side of things. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on VMware and its capabilities. So stay tuned for those videos. And as always, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch these videos. And if you like this stuff and you like this sort of content, please remember to hit that like and that subscribe button if you're not. Have a great day.